Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, uh, I do want to remind you of a couple other great podcasts out there. There's The War, uh, as we continue our run through... Uh, uh, old time radio during World War II. You can follow us at thewar.greatdetectives.net. Also check out, uh, my old time radio Superman podcast currently being guest hosted by Blaine Dowler at laserandsword.com. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, The Templeton Matter. From Hollywood, it's time now for Johnny Dollar. Blood Barlow, Johnny. I'm in a spot. What's the matter? The Templeton house in Boston was knocked over sometime during the night. We have a $100,000 loss on our hands. Can you go over there right away? Well, I'll see what the plane situation is, Lud. Never I... mind the plane situation. Just pack up and get out to the airport. I'll meet you at Hangar 12. What? I'm chartering a plane for you. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Mideastern Indemnity Corporation Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Templeton matter. Expense account item one, five dollars even, cab fare, from my apartment to Hangar 12 at the airport. A twin engine bonanza had been rolled out and a fueling truck was pulled up alongside. A man in a sheepskin seemed to be supervising things. The man who seemed to be supervising him was Lud Barlow. When he saw me, he waved his briefcase. Hey, Johnny! Hi! Hi, are you all set? Well, I'm here. That's what you mean, lad. That all your luggage? Yeah, this is it. This is Tommy Clark, Johnny, your pilot. How are you? Hi, Tom. I'll uh, stow this gear for you. Oh, thanks. The faster we move on this, the better off we are. You know that. I know. Uh, this is the blanket policy. This is the itemized list. This is the itemized list broken down. You'll have to check the itemized against the sales. Your authorization procedure... And a description of stock records, including shipments received by Templeton House up to and including the first day of last week. Okay? Well, now maybe you'll tell me what this is all about. And when you get there, what? What it's all about. Let's start with Templeton House, huh? It's the biggest jewelry firm in Boston. You said they were robbed last night. Burglarized. Broken into somewhere between 5 and 7 o'clock in the morning. All set, Mr. Dollar. What'd they get away with? Well, that's for you to find out, Johnny. We carry a blanket policy on all their stock. Anything in the store in the way of merchandise is covered. On the phone, you said something about $100,000. It may be $200,000, Johnny. I take it you talked to somebody in Boston. Yeah. yeah. Did mind. you talk to the police? Yes, for a minute. I told them I was sending a man. They're expecting you. Give your hand, Mr. Dollar. Oh, Thanks, Tom. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Who's in charge, lad? Lieutenant Roebuck. Roebuck? Yeah. Get your seatbelt, Mr. Della. Oh, sure. He'll want to see those contents records. You'll be sure and tell him they're up to date. Who's the man with the company? What? The man at the company. Temple Temple. Stand clear, Mr. Bala. Remember, Johnny, a client can face a thing like this a lot better if the man from the insurance company standing by. I'll it? try to remember that. Good luck and keep the informed. By the time we arrived at the Boston airport, I'd read over the policy and had a fair idea of the coverage involved. Expense account item two, ten dollars, more cab fare. I dropped my bags off at the Independence Hotel and had the driver take me over to Templeton House. Two police cars were parked in front of the building and two uniformed police officers were parked in the doorway. I'm sorry, mister, the store's not open today. Well, I'm from the insurance company. Oh, Lieutenant Robux in the back. Go ahead. At the back of the store, a white-coated intern and an ambulance attendant were working over a blanket-wrapped figure laid out on the stretcher. One of them was operating a plasma tube. The other was checking the pulse. A group of men, some in uniform, were watching closely. The tall, thin one seemed to be in charge of things. Roebuck? 
Uh, yeah. Johnny Dollar, Mid oh, Eastern okay. Indemnity. Oh, that didn't take you long. This uh, Sergeant Younger, Sergeant Toohey. This is Mr. Dollar from the insurance company. Hi, man. What's this? Oh, this man was a special patrolman working the area. He must have walked right into the middle of it and got himself shot. They've been giving him transfusions ever since they found him. Uh-huh. Said anything yet? I hasn't been conscious. Doc, how about it? Yeah, we can't do any more here, Lieutenant. We'll have to risk a trip to the hospital and try to operate. Okay, boys, load up. Right. Doc, this is Mr. Dollar, insurance company. How are you, Doctor? Okay. Doc, we're going to want to talk to him the minute he comes around. I'm not going to promise you anything, Lieutenant. Well, see you. All right. Now, Mr. Dollar, you didn't waste much time. I brought a contents list that might help you, Lieutenant. Good. The best help we're going to get is from that patrolman. Come on, show you around. This is where they got in. Jimmy, huh? Yeah, most likely. There's marks there on the door jam. But near as we can tell right now, they only took important stuff. Easy to move. Easy to break down and unload, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, you can see where they snipped the alarms, grounded the wires. Mm-hmm. Showcases aren't touched. No, they went straight for the safe, darling. Well, we really got something on our hands, huh? You don't just break into a store and open one of these things very easy. Someone did. The neighborhood was canvassed for possible witnesses. I spent the rest of the morning with Dorian Templeton, the owner of the company. By noon, we had taken an inventory of the missing stock and drawn up a tentative list. As far as I know, that about does it, Mr. Dollar. So what's the next step? I'll check this against the merchandise received reports, Mr. Templeton. It'll take a while. As soon as I have that finished, you can check it over again and file a formal claim. And then? The company will reimburse you in cash. Well, what are the chances for recovery in a case like this? Well, I could quote the actuaries, Mr. Templeton, but I won't. Why not? Whoever broke in here last night knew what they were about. They opened your vault the way you'd open your front door. They took what they wanted and got out very quickly. No alarm, no witnesses. The chances are they plan the rest of it just as well. They probably scattered. The police aren't sure how many men were involved. They know it was at least two men, possibly three. How do they arrive at that? One man working on the safe, another man looking out. Possibly two. The point is, the more men who are involved, the harder it'll be for them to take the jewelry, break it down, sell it, and stay out of sight. They're going to get away with it? I didn't say that. Well, nothing seems to have gone wrong with their plans so far. One thing went wrong. That special patrolman surprised them. True, he didn't have time to draw his gun or sound the alarm, but they had to shoot him. And if something hadn't gone wrong, they'd have been satisfied to knock him on the head. Uh, Yes. Well, what happens now? Well, that's up to the police. I can tell you their investigation will take some time. Burglary is the toughest kind of thing to work on. Why? No witnesses. Uh, I never thought of that. Dollar, you all cleaned up? Well, we got a tentative list. As soon as I check it, I'll give it to you. Okay. Mr. Templeton, I'd like to have you come with me now. Now? Yes, we'll want your statement, sir, and there's quite a bit of work to do with the employees. Uh, all right. Dollar, as soon as you get the list up, give me a ring, will you? Yeah, okay. Uh, any news about the policeman? Yeah. It's a murder case now. Expense account item three, $25, stenographic fees. The public stenographer at the hotel helped me make a comprehensive list of the stolen items, which was verified by Templeton. The amount of loss was set at $100,000. By late afternoon, clerks, stenographers, accountants, designers, salespeople, stonecutters, all in Templeton's employ had made statements to Lieutenant Roebuck. The statements were in the process of being checked. A general roundup of known safe crackers and burglary suspects had begun. Expense account item four, three dollars and seventy-five cents dinner. Lieutenant Roebuck and myself. <laughs> well, it's going to be a long night. Yeah. Any luck on the employees? Well, it's hard to say yet. One of them has a record. Hmm? Yeah, a fellow named Tabor. One of the janitors there. He's a two-time loser. I had him tucked away in a cell until we clear some of this other stuff away. Has he said anything? Oh, he denies all knowledge. As far as time incident goes, he was home sleeping when all this happened, but that doesn't rule him out of somehow getting that safe combination and passing it on to a friend. Yeah. man with the record's apt to have that kind of friends would be interested in just that kind of thing. Hey, uh, how much do you want me around? Your free agent, Dollar? 
If you have any ideas, I'll listen. It's a tough baby, any way you look at it. Let me talk to Tabor. There might be a shortcut. Why not? Well? John Tabor? That's right. Who are you? Johnny Dollar. I'd like to talk to you a minute. Okay, talk. You might be in a lot of trouble, Tabor. That'd be too bad. They tell me you're a two-time loser. If you don't believe what they tell you, you just go look it up for yourself. It's right down there in the books. How did you get that job at Templeton's? I asked for it. They know about your record? No. You keep it from them? I didn't broadcast it, would you? No. Okay, what other dumb questions have you got? Do you have any ideas about this? I've got a lot of ideas. Do you know anything about it? No. Need anything? What? Cigarettes, anything? I'm all set. Okay. My company faces a big loss in this case. We'd like to avoid that loss. There's a standard offer I'm authorized to make in some instances. I'm going to make it to you. If you have any knowledge of this crime and can furnish any information that will lead to the arrest of the persons involved and recovery of the merchandise, my company will guarantee you the best possible legal assistance in the event that information should incriminate you. That's pretty generous. Well, I have to say it to you. You can use your own judgment. Hey, guide. It's a pretty good offer when you think about it, Tabor. You have a record. The police can't pass you up without a lot of scrutiny. You know that. That record makes me a real hot one. I swiped a couple of cars, and now they think I might have opened that vault. No, they don't think that. But they have to find out if you might have contact with somebody who did open it. I don't know anything about it. In that case, you'll be released. Oh, sure. Sure, I'll be released when every cop in town had a go at me twice. I'll be released when the guys who did the job walk into the station and say we didn't mean it, we want to give it back. They've always got to have somebody to throw to the newspapers. Maybe. You know it and I know it. Nothing better than to throw some old ex-con in a can and hold him for questioning. Well, darling? You go for it? No. Any more ideas? Turn him loose, Lieutenant. See whom he talks to and whom he meets. John Tabor was released without bail and a 24-hour watch was put on his residence. By 10 o'clock the next morning, the police had located three witnesses to the shots that had killed the special patrolman. However, none of them had seen the burglars or the car that was used. The district attorney's office issued an order impounding the financial records of Templeton House. A complete audit revealed that its affairs were in excellent shape. It also revealed that Templeton himself was the only man in the jewelry firm who had the combination to the vaults. His statements emphatically denied giving the combination to anyone. As far as the police were able to determine, he was telling the truth. The search for all known safe crackers extended into New York and Philadelphia and Chicago. On the morning of the third day, a claims adjuster arrived from Hartford with a check for $100,000, full payment on the claim. Two hours later, we had the first break on the case. Hey! Caller, hey! What? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Come on, get in. What's up? Well, the Harbor Division found a body down by the docks early this morning. All weighted down with 38 slugs. They were fired from the same gun that killed that special patrolman. They match, huh? Like the dimples on your knee. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. It is a rare event when a young man decides to leave civilization behind and hide himself away in the steaming jungle just so he can help his fellow humans in a remote corner of the world. The late Dr. Tom Dooley did just that when he left the United States to help the sick and starving jungle people in the little kingdom of Laos in Southeast Asia. Dr. Dooley's story is well known to nearly everyone. And all over the world, people talk of his little jungle hospital on stilts. That's where he treated the dread diseases of the jungle and trained native medical technicians so that they might help their own people. Dr. Dooley wrote and lectured to many people so that the work of his medical assistance program, Medico, might go on. 
It was not easy for someone so young and so talented to give up the bright lights of the city and plant himself down in an unknown jungle just for the purpose of helping unfortunate people he didn't even know. But through Medico, Dr. Tom Dooley wanted to help people. He wanted to help people to help themselves. Today, the work of Medico is going forward in a number of countries besides Laos. Young men are being sent to the United States to be schooled in medicine with the idea of returning to their own countries to help their own people. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of medical supplies have been donated by American businessmen and pharmaceutical companies. Today, Dr. Tom Dooley's work is being continued for him. It is helping to create better understanding. It is an injection of the spirit of freedom. The right of all men everywhere. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Templeton Matter. I spent the rest of the day with Lieutenant Roebuck at the morgue. The body that had been found in the harbor was a man about 35 to 40 years old. Slim build, dark hair. The labels had been cut out of his clothes and the laundry marks torn off. His fingerprints didn't check with anything in the local files. Roebuck put them on the wire to Washington and requested an urgent identification. Johnny Dollar. Blood Barlow, Johnny. What's this in the paper? Well, the special patrolman and the unidentified man were killed by the same gun. As soon as we get an identification, we can go to work. Well, how about that ex-con that turned up working at Templeton's? Tabor? Well, we're still watching him. He might have been the case, man. So far, it's just an idea. I'd like a recovery on this one, Johnny. So would I. What do you think is possible? Well, two days ago, I would have said no. Today, things look better. For one thing, none of the merchandise has shown up on the market. For another thing, there'll be, there has to be, some kind of connection with this unidentified man. I just read your report on Templeton himself. He's out of the question as a suspect? So far, yeah. He's the only one who had the combination to the safe. There's no apparent motive for him to rob himself. But he's the only Don't one Don't start had... yelling at me, Lud. I know what you're thinking. Find a motive. Well, give us time, boy. Give us time on everything. Lud? Oh, I guess I hate to pay off big claims. <laughs> you may get it back. Keep your pants on. Expense account item five, fifty dollars deposit for rented car. That afternoon, I drove from Boston to Creeksdale, the home of the Grantland Safe Company, where I met a man who looked as formidable as the product he manufactured. I am Grantland, sir. I found him standing inside a shiny new vault, ready for shipment. Beautiful thing, eh? On its way to South America tonight. Well, I, I never thought of a safe exactly that way, Mister Grant. Ah. Beauty, strength. Think for a moment, sir, the treasures it will someday hold. But I bore you, sir, with my enthusiasm. Now then, you say you are here on a matter of vaults? One vault, Mr. Grantland. No. The one your company sold and installed at the Templeton House in Boston 17 years ago. Yes. Have you read about the burglary? No, sir, I have not. Mm. Templeton House. Yes, the vault was opened. Blasted. Opened. Someone had a combination. I am bewildered, sir. Indeed I am. You want a thorough accounting from my organization, of course. Well, that's up to the police, Mr. Grantland. Right now, for my own information, I wonder if you could tell me who might have the combination to that vault. Well, in answer to your question, I would first have to inspect our records. Well, I brought the serial numbers. Oh, well, let me see. Um, mm-hmm. That's as good as... Uh, the K-series, Mr. Keating set the final combination. Mr. Keating? Yes, my chief engineer for years. And who else? Uh, myself, sir. I'd have a record of the combination in my own file. And who are those available to? Myself, sir. I keep them in my own vault. I see. Anyone else? No one here. The people in proper authority at Templeton. I'd like to meet Mr. Keating if I could. Impossible, Mr. Dollar. Why? Mr. Keating has been dead these six years. I drove back to Boston, phoned Roebuck, and told him about my interview with Grantland. He said he'd already started looking into Grantland's background and expected to have a report within 36 hours. 
I was a little surprised when Dorian Tevelin called half an hour later and asked me to have lunch with him. Would you like a drink? No, not now, guys, no. I didn't know whether to call you or the police, Mr. Dollar. I finally decided on you. Uh Uh-huh. What's the matter? Well, it's one of those strange things. Uh, I'm not a particularly observant man, and I don't know why I observe this. Go on. However, last night, Mrs. Templeton and I went to a dinner dance at the country club. We thought with all this business, a little relaxation should do me some good. Yeah, sure. There was a young girl at the table next to ours, a very pretty girl whom I've never seen before. I happened to notice her handbag, jeweled affair, quite expensive. One of our items. Yeah? It didn't occur to me until we were leaving that it had been sampled stock, not for sale. What do you mean? It was stolen, Mr. Dollar. Why not the police, Mr. Templeton? I was going to call them first thing this morning and report it. And then I got a package in the mail. It was the handbag, intact. Crazy? You said it. Did you happen to get the name of the girl? I asked the Meta D. He said her name was Helen Tabor. That's not so crazy. Expense account item six, ten cents, one phone call. To Lieutenant Roebuck to see if John Tabor was still being watched. Roebuck said that two men were on duty watching his house at all times. I saw them when I drove up an hour later. They were parked across the street. Yes? Miss Tabor? Yes, who are you? Johnny Dollar, is your father in? He's sleeping right now. May I help you? I don't know. Didn't I see you at the country club last night? Why, yes, were you there? Couldn't keep my eyes off of you. Or your handbag. Oh. I'll talk to him, honey. Dad, is anything wrong? Nothing I can't handle. Go ahead, fix up a pot of coffee. All right, Dad. Nice girl, Tabor. Yeah. Templeton was at the country club last night. He saw her. You can talk to me or you can talk to the police. I don't have to talk to anybody. The way it looks is that you cased the job. You might even have killed a special patrolman. He was shot close range. Could have been somebody new and trusted. You've got your share of things. That handbag was part of it. A little part of it. The way it looks, huh? That's about it. Of course, I don't understand why you sent the handbag back, but then you've probably got a good story for that. Oh, I've got a good story. Nobody will believe it, but I've got a good one. It starts off by me saying I didn't help in that heist. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't case the place for anybody. I didn't even know it was coming off. Let's get to the handbag, huh? I took that two days ago. I borrowed it. I've been borrowing stuff right along whenever my kid needed anything. I always come back in good shape. I told her they... They let me do it. She don't know anything. Borrowed, huh? It's kind of a strange philosophy. I don't even know how to spell the word. I do know my kid's got a life ahead of her. I got to give her every chance to look good, act good, use her brains, meet the right people. Not just because the right people have money, but because they know more right people. It takes a, it takes a little extra to let her do things like that. You let her use the handbag because she had a date to go to a dance. Uh, you guys are all the same. I didn't expect you to believe it. Oh, relax. Maybe I do believe you. What? It sounds nutty enough to be the truth. It is the truth. All right. You taking me in? I'm going to tell Roebuck about this. He'll probably want to talk to you. He can check it better than I can. No, I haven't any authority to take you in. I wouldn't take you in anyhow. I'm interested in guys who walk into vaults. See you around. Hey, wait a minute. What? I never thought I'd see the day when I try to help a cop or anybody like a cop. Maybe this is the day. I, um... I saw the paper last night. Oh? The picture of that guy they found floating in the harbor. They tagged him yet? He's a John Doe until we hear from Washington. His name's Kylie. Billy Kylie. How do you know? I used to know him a long time ago. Billy Kylie? Yeah, from Philadelphia. Thanks. 
A check with the Philadelphia police and a comparison of fingerprints identified the man as William H. Kiley. His Boston address was on Parker Street. I drove out there with Lieutenant Roebuck. It was an ordinary, undistinguished apartment house. No one answered at apartment 12A, so we let ourselves in. The room had nothing to offer in the way of evidence. Well, did you find anything? No. Well, I'll have some men come out here and give it a good going over. Well, maybe the manager or the tenants has something that'll help us. Come on, let's go. Yeah. No. I'll be careful, though. Yeah. Yeah. Tim? Yeah, this is Tim. Any trouble there? A little. Say that again. A little. I don't know who you are, but I know you're not Tim. Well, it sounds like we're getting something. Here, let me have the phone. I'll see if I can trace it. Don't bother. I know where we can find him. What? I'd recognize his voice anywhere. <laughs> It was dark by the time we got to the Grantland Safe Company factory in Creekstale. There was a single work light spreading a sickly yellow glow over the main floor loading platform. We were expected. It went off somewhere in the darkness of the building. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Right. Let's try for that stair really. Right. You see the flashes? There. All right. We'll have to try. Mr. Make... Dollar! You're alone. Answer him. Yeah? What are you doing here? Looking for $100,000 worth of jewelry and the answer to a couple of murders. <laughs> Funny? <laughs> you're very foolhardy, but you're courageous. A man of your perception could do well with a part of that money. No, thanks. I'll take it all. You will take Nothing, sir. Keep him talking. I'll try to get under the stairs. Are you alone? For a little while. But I've got people coming, though. Oh, people, eh? <laughs> Mr. Dollar? Still alive and kicking, Mr. Grantland. You can't shoot around corners. No. <laughs> but then I don't have to shoot around the corner. <laughs> Very, very good, very good shooting, sir. Grandland, I want a statement. No, no. No statement. No statement. He was dead before the ambulance arrived, and there was no statement. There was never a statement. As nearly as it could be pieced together, Grantland himself opened the vaults at Templeton House. William Kiley and possibly a man named Tim helped him. Kiley, of course, was killed for his efforts. Tim never appeared, was never identified. My hotel bill ran up to $168. That's item seven. Item eight, $35, car rental. I got $50 deposit back. Item nine, $32 and a half, airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $413.28. Remarks? Put that against $100,000, the insurance company didn't have to pay off. Johnny Dollar. This is Barlow. I just talked to Roebuck in Boston. There's not one scrap of that jewelry anywhere in that whole safe factory. Not one piece. I know. What? Just about now, there's a safe at the port of New York being shipped to South America. It's a Grantland safe. And if you hurry over there, you can... <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Welcome back. Uh, to some long-time listeners of the show, this may sound like a somewhat familiar story. Uh, and uh, this goes way, way back to uh, one of the early Edmund O'Brien shows. Uh, we uh, aired it about four years ago, and it has a very similar, though not quite identical, plot. Uh, that story was 85 Little Manx, which was aired early on in 1950. And that'll uh, actually do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with police headquarters. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter or Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.